For years and years, athletes, before competition, have used stretching as a way to warm up. And not that stretching is bad, it's what type of stretching are you doing, how are you doing it, and when are you doing it. Um, so what I want to talk about here is a couple different ways of warming up tissue for competition. One of the ways um, people have stretched is doing a passive stretch. And what a passive stretch is, is moving the joint to a position and then forcing it a little bit farther than it would normally go on its own. Another way of stretching is to do active stretching. And active stretching is to take the joint and move it as far as it can go on its own with no added force of moving it into a position past its active range. A third type is dynamic stretching. And dynamic is kind of motion with um, the ability to move the body through the extremes of where it's moving and progressively take it a little farther each time during the motion. What I want to show you is a little bit of the science behind the different types of stretching and what they're actually doing to the tissue. So one of the things I want to show you before I go through some of these stretches is I'm going to uh, use Kelsey here and actually put her in a position to do a calf muscle test for her medial and lateral head of her gastroc. And this technique is uh, by Greg Roscoff, Muscle Activation Techniques, who's uh, gone through the body and basically developed a muscle testing technique to find out does the muscle fire immediately or is there a hesitation or inability for that muscle to produce a contraction. So what I'm going to do for Kelsey here is have her have, have her foot right here. I'm going to slightly have her rotate her foot in, turned at the ankle. I want Kelsey to hold there. I'm putting my hand on my knee, bracing. I'm pulling toward me. Now this isn't a power struggle. This is to see does the muscle fire or does it not. So Kelsey's in this position. Hold there, Kelsey. Ready, resist. Awesome. Turn the foot out. Hold there. Ready, resist. Good. So you can see both times I pull, Kelsey, that feel pretty solid to you? So when I pull, her muscle is able to produce a contraction. Now the first one I want to show you is I'm going to have Kelsey stand up right here. So Kelsey, why don't you stand facing me. So you're going to take your left leg, put it behind you, and she's going to do a passive calf stretch. And a lot of times you'll see runners doing this right before they go for a jog or right before they go to the starting block or whatever it is they're doing. She's stretching her calf, lengthening the tissue past what it would normally go to. Okay, Kelsey, have a seat back up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same calf test that I just did a few moments ago to give you an idea of what's happening here. So Kelsey, foot here, foot turned in, okay? Hold right there, don't let me pull. Hold there, Kelsey, don't let me pull. Turn the foot out. Hold there, Kelsey, don't let me pull. Both test positions, lateral and medial head of the gastroc, Kelsey is not able to produce the contraction in the same efficiency, in the same time frame that she could prior to doing this stretch. So Kelsey, let's treat this real quick. I'm just going to get the muscle working again. So all we're doing now is preparing her tissue so that it fires on demand rather than having that delay. So Kelsey, foot right here, turn in, hold there, ready to resist. Good, again, ready to resist, awesome. Let's do the lateral head. And again, preparing the tissue, so we tested the medial head, it was came back strong. We're doing the lateral head now. Foot turned out, Kelsey. Hold there, ready, resist. Awesome, one more time, good. Now, so, we now have our calf back to its ability to fire on demand. Now let's do this one, Kelsey, foot straight. What I want her to do is a active calf stretch. So what Kelsey's gonna do here is she's gonna pull using the muscles on this side of her leg to pull her foot that way. She's gonna use muscles from the toes all the way through the ankle and through the anterior part of her tibia pulling that direction. Hold there, Kelsey. One, two, three, four, five, six. Relax. Let's do it again. Let's really force it as best you can. Good. Hold there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. So now what I'm going to do, she just stretched her calf by contracting her anterior tibialis and all these other muscles on this side. So now let me put Kelsey back in the test position. 
So she's going to be here with her foot flat, foot turned in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to retest her. Okay, Kelsey, hold there. Ready, resist. Good. Ready, resist. Good. So the medial head's still strong. Hold there, Kelsey. Ready, resist. Good. So doing the active stretching does not have the same effect in what I'll call inhibiting this calf muscle as it would had she done a passive stretch. And the, you know, I find this interesting, especially with runners that I've talked to. Well, I need to stretch my calf before I run because I don't want to tear my Achilles. I don't want to strain my Achilles, whatever it is. What I find interesting is on a runner, when they're running, their foot is not in this position behind them. It is in this position where the ball, they're on the ball of the foot. So if you look at that position of the ankle, and I hold that position, that is a position of relative neutral to the ankle joint. Because here's how much farther I can actively move my ankle into full dorsiflexion. So the fact that they're saying we need to stretch it because it goes past this position, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Now yeah, running inclines, that might happen, but for the most part, the athlete is on the ball of the foot which now means that you really don't need to go to some of these extreme positions.